Good morning. I wanted to take five or six minutes this morning and address my fellow colleagues at San Diego Unified School District. In light of what is going to be happening on Monday, I was having a hard time sleeping last night. And so I woke up early this morning and wrote down a few notes that I'm going to reference and hope to get a little bit of your time. I've worked for our district for 15 years and I've been in the school system for 20. I am a licensed mental health clinician for San Diego Unified School District. Um, and I'm an integrative psychotherapist. We get to make a choice on Monday and I'm curious if any of you have spent time thinking about that choice and that decision. As a district, since COVID, we have continually, continuously gotten it wrong from the beginning. And I have a question for you. Are you willing to look at someone that you have worked with alongside for 10, 15, 20, maybe even a year and watch them lose their job? Are you willing to remain silent while our most precious assets and our most vulnerable students are segregated and shamed in the name of health? Three years ago, and yes, it's been three school years, I've watched people that I work alongside with, people I respect, people that I care about, comply with unlawful and unethical mandates that harm our children. As a mental health clinician, I have watched my students and their families and even coworkers fall into some of the most unhealthy behaviors and distorted thinking in the name of health without any actual evidence or justification for such drastic means. I have watched fear, distorted thinking, anxiety, and skewed judgment lead and influence policy. I have watched my community shut down beaches, gyms, discourage sunlight, while promoting and spending time to ensure that when people want to get their fast food poison and liquor and stop by the weed shop, they could easily get their alcohol in a to-go cup, which the news touted as being miraculous, as statistically our roads became more and more unsafe and one of the leading causes of death for children is actually car accidents and suicide, not COVID. I have watched in horror as the statistics of obesity and COVID become more clear and student after student, client after client, stay locked in their house, hidden from the world, from their families, hidden from school, hidden from sunlight, hidden from exercise, hidden from church, hidden from all the things as clinicians that we are taught are protective factors. I have watched everything we know about mental health, about depression and even suicide all of those protective factors and coping skills were outlawed in the name of illegal mandates. And we did not speak out about that as a school. We did not advocate against it. And we became mentally sicker and physically unhealthy. And we took one step closer to actually experiencing the negative consequences of COVID compared to someone in good emotional and physical health. I didn't see encouragement of positive thinking or self-affirmations, mind, body work, movement, socialization, human touch, what do we know about human touch or in-person interaction? We didn't see playing or laughter or visualization or smiles. We're not seeing smiles at school. Do we see people's faces, facial expressions? Church, school, God, we did nothing. Even though we know through research and through our own intuition, that was going to save us and protect our health. I often thought to myself, am I truly the only one as we all complied sitting in these meetings pretending like this is normal, like we're doing our best to help these children when we went against everything we know morally, when we went against everything we've taught from a, been taught from a research perspective that research has shown us, while we've ignored our intuition and justified it all by saying we're just following orders. This is what my department says. This is what my lead says. This is what admin says. This is what the district office says. This is what the board says. Well, this is what the governor says. In June of this year, I filed a CPS report, six page single space document, essentially against all of us and, and all of you ag against our board members, our district. Um, I cited multiple penal codes that were being broken 
one of which stated that we're all operating outside of our scope of contract and our scope of practice by engaging in discussion and subsequent coercion of a student's bodily autonomy and medical decisions. Thus far, our legal team, police department, board members, or the county have not followed up with me. They've doubled down and now we're proposing an even more harmful mandate requiring unjust expectations of our children and our families. Do you, as my team, as my district, as my fellow teachers, educators, therapists, do you recognize that the majority of our students on an IEP will be negatively impacted by this mandate? How are the district and our board members going to stand up waving that BLM flag, virtual, virtue signaling, while literally violating Ed Code 220? And if you don't have that code memorized, look it up. While we are segregating students of color and students with disabilities who will be disproportionately impacted by this mandate, how are you going to look at one of my students who perhaps from a very young age, their body was not their own, that they had that autonomy taken and abused by anyone who wanted it. Turn around and offer them counseling and then turn back around and look at that child and their, look at their family and act confident that you somehow have a right to say what goes into their body that you have a right to their body, that one more person gets to violate their body if they want to come to school, that is the worst kind of shame. And that is the worst kind of abuse. Are you as a teacher going to look at a parent of my students whose child has been suffering from documented shot injuries disproportionately impacting black males and tell them that it's their body and your choice, forcing them to choose between an inclusive education or a shot that could kill them. And I have the same data available to me that you all do. So don't act surprised if you haven't heard this yet because it's, it's available. We're going to this is a disease that the left-leaning New York Times in their data and research review stated that it's so rare in children that it was hard to quantify the actual statistics. As we are faced as providers with true life-threatening issues such as rising suicide rates, increased substance abuse, increased DUIs, increased impaired driving, depression, anxiety, hopelessness, isolation, are we going to mask the face of a healthy five, six, seven year old high school student who just spent the last two years being surrounded by irrational behavior based off of fear, anxiety, and 24 hour propaganda. And then make that child who has documented sensory issues and anxiety sit on a blacktop in a hundred degree weather with their face masked and face covered, not able to see the face of a supportive staff and then pretend that that outburst they might be having has nothing to do with us. Because as a mental health practitioner, I can tell you that no amount of therapy is going to fix the damage that we have inflicted on these young children as a nation, either through our own distorted lens based in irrational fear and anxiety or under the justification that we are just following orders. During the Nuremberg trial, following orders was not a justifiable excuse for crimes against humanity. The arrogance and lack of connected leadership in this district is destroying our schools and our families and our staff. Are we going to stand by and pretend that sovereignty is no longer a God-given right? Are we going to claim to be a district who touts itself as the district of diversity and inclusion when we have hundreds, if not thousands, of families whose cultural, religious, familial beliefs do not support an experimental shot that could kill them or their child or harm their integrity. Research has shown us that lower income 
those on the lower income, on the spectrum, under the poverty line. Mothers, fathers, parents are less likely to feel comfortable asking doctors and advocating for their children, which includes asking questions. And this includes men and women of all ethnicities. This includes our Caucasian families as well. But disproportionately, again, this impacts as a whole our families of color, our mothers of color. Are we going to sit down and look at those parents and tell them that their voice doesn't matter? that their doctor's voice doesn't matter and be one more person to stand in between their intuition as a parent and their doctor of their choosing, their private conversation. Are we going to tell them what they need to do with their body? Do we honestly think it's better as a department that my department that's specifically already down five clinicians while mental health needs across the district are rising? And as far as I know, this is maybe above my pay grade, but I haven't seen millions of dollars that were put into mental health for our district. I haven't heard of anything impacting mental health. And we're slated with this mandate to lose approximately five to 10 clinicians. And those are just uh, staff members, not just clinicians, but, but behavioral specialists and our team, like the critical like boots on the ground team that are in and out of these classrooms, we're going to lose them. And you might not know that because maybe you haven't been listening and maybe they don't feel safe enough to talk to you, but they're safe enough to talk to me. And that's what's going to happen. Are you, as a staff member, going to sit by because you think you are more deserving because you got a shot? Because let me remind you, you can spread this just the same as someone who has not received it. And that does not make you any better. It does not make you any smarter. It does not make you any more worthy of keeping your job. I see how hard all of you work day after day. My own students, teachers, I love them. I have worked with you through this pandemic. I've seen you struggling. I see you staying up at night. I see your empathy and your genuine kindness and caring about these students. But as a whole, we are getting this wrong and we cannot stay silent. Come Monday, you have a choice. You have a choice if we're going to follow the Nuremberg Code. And if you're going to acknowledge that our government and science has utilized children, women, women of color, and men of color within our lifetime, our recent lifetime, for medical trials that have maimed and destroyed them, are you going to stand up for tyranny? Because against tyranny, we signed our contracts to educate children, not to play doctor, not to enforce illegal mandates, not to judge, not to shame, not to separate, not to segregate. Will you continue, and I need you to listen right now, to support a union that will not stand up for its members and does not believe in sovereignty? Do you as a district employee know that our nursing department is willing and offering, handing over your personal employee medical record, your COVID status to your union without your consent. I'm going to say it again. Are you going to support a union who is willingly requesting your personal medical information from our nursing department, from your employee file, and San Diego Unified Nursing Department is providing your COVID status without written or verbal consent. That is criminal activity. And if you don't believe me, call me, talk to me. You know where to find me. I have it all in writing and it's true. Monday, we have a choice. And if you're someone listening to this from another district or another state, that doesn't think this is impacting you, we're just the beginning. So I encourage you to dig deep and think about the repercussions of your choice and silence as a choice. If perhaps you have not thought about Monday, about what you're going to do, about how you're going to be an ally, it's not too late to change your mind. It's not too late to get educated. It's not too, too late to do the right thing as a district. I understand that you might be afraid of losing your job or being judged by any repercussions that may come for you supporting sovereignty. But I can promise you 
that nothing in this world is going to feel worse than waking up one day and realizing that you just supported crimes against humanity and allowed it to happen in your classroom. You are not alone. We have over 100,000 students in this district. We have something like 13,000 employees. So let me go first. I will be number one. My name is Dr. Amanda Morris. I am an integrative psychotherapist for 15 years with San Diego Unified School District. And on Monday, I am choosing to be an ally for my fellow colleagues, my students, and I will be supporting medical sovereignty and the Constitution of the United States. If you choose to join me, please state your name, state your department, and share this message because I will not allow 245 years of sacrifice to crumble on my watch. Hold the line.